Welcome to this video on the calibration of continuous type mixers, or better known as latex trucks. For this video, we're going to be walking through Kentucky Method 64-312-08. You may be wondering how you get a copy of this Kentucky Method. Well, the best way to do that is to just go to Google, type in the search bar, KYTC Kentucky Methods, and then look for the one that just has the methods. Some may take you to an actual method, and if that's the case, just hit back and go again. Once you get into the methods, you're going to scroll down un until you get to the concrete and cement section and then look for KM64-312-08. Click on it and it takes you right to the Kentucky method that we will be using for this video. Kind okay, of just see all the information here. So before we start doing any of the testing, there are several things that we need to have on site and ready. The sand and coarse aggregate stockpiles. The latex calibration trucks you're going, you're also going to need to know the controls and kind of have an idea of what the operator is doing. You're going to need to know where the meter is, where the gauges for the latex and the water are. You're going to need a stopwatch and an accurate scale readable to one half pound. Next you're going to need a 20 gallon container and then another bucket to calibrate uh, your water and your ore latex. In our case it's going to be latex. Next thing we need to look at the volumetric concrete truck itself. First thing we're looking at are the aggregate hoppers. Here you can see the sand and coarse aggregate. Here's the one for cement. And then up in the front, you see your water supply and your latex supply. Uh, next on, we're looking where the gates are for the sand, the coarse aggregate, and then your control center and the mixing. You need to get to know these and understand how the operator's using them and what you need to look at during the pour. Next up, we need to know what is our mix design that we're going to be using for uh, the overlay. If you find in the spec book in 606 here toward the bottom, of the page you can see the mix design. Also you need to have a sheet to put your information in. There's an Excel sheet and a PDF sheet. I prefer the Excel sheet because a lot of the work gets done for you. Alright so let's get started in cement calibration. So first thing you need to do is to make sure you have a tear weight on the bucket and zero the scale. The truck's throttle, throttle needs to be set as per the specified tachometer. The operator will start the stopwatch and then start dispensing the cement. The operator will go to a set meter count. They should have an idea of what that meter count needs to be to measure out 94 pounds of cement. Once the meter reaches the set count, the operator will stop dispensing the cement and then they will take the bucket of cement and put it on the scale. Here you can see we're still dispensing the cement. He's got his stopwatch. He's watching the meter count. And as he reaches that meter count, he stops it. Now you weigh it, get your weight, and then usually the cement is just wasted at uh, the calibration site. So we're going to be using the Excel spreadsheet for this video. I like it because it does a lot of the math for you. You're going to need to fill out in the project information first. First thing you need to make sure you input what the county, the project number, the contractor, the date of the truck calibration, the truck number, serial number, and truck capacity, the truck RPM, and who is doing the calibration. Over here on the left, you can see the section for the cement information. For the first run, we set the count to 170. After that count was reached, the stopwatch read 29.22, and the weight of the cement in the bucket was 98.7 pounds. So remember, we want to get the count as close to 94 pounds as possible. So for the next run, we set this, uh, ran the cement out to a count of 165. That resulted in a time of 28.37 seconds and a weight of 92.7. As you can see, we're now less than 24, so let's bump the count up a little bit and then repeat these steps until we get at least five samples. Once you get all your sample information recorded, the spreadsheet will automatically total the weight, the count, and the time. With that information, we can calculate the cement meter count and discharge time for 94 pounds or one bag of cement. If you're doing this by hand, you'll just have to do these calculations with a calculator as you get the information. As you can see at the bottom of the screen, it counts 
uh, for one cubic yard of 658 pounds of cement with that equation and the information for our runs it calculates to a meter count of 1,142.98 and the discharge time for that is 28.063. We're going to be using that time going forward for the sand and rock gate calibration. If you have any questions the Kentucky Method walks you through these calculations step by step. Next up is calibration of the sand gate. Before we can calibrate the sand gate, a sample needs to be taken the day before to get the physical and moisture properties. Then the stockpile is covered to retain all moisture. Our target weight for this run is going to be 110 pounds. That is determined from the mix design and the moisture of the sand. The seconds for calibration of the sand is half of that as for what was calculated for the cement. This is to kind of keep the weight of the sand down for sampling. For the sand, it's going to be 14.03. The operator has determined that the first run needs to have the gate set to 2. The Kentucky method says to set the gate to get an amount less than computed weight, 110 for us, greater than, and close to. Now let's go to the truck and adjust the gate setting to 2. With the gate setting adjusted, we start again with tearing the weight of the container, place the container under the mixer, and then get the stopwatch ready and start dispensing the sand. So remember, we're only dispensing for 14.03 seconds. Here you can see he's watching his stopwatch. He stopped it. So after we stop it, we weigh the sample, get the weight of the sample, and then just uh, waste it there on site. So back to the spreadsheet. Enter here the weight of the first run of sand. So for the run, this run, the weight was 107.1. So we ran another run and got a weight of 107.3. This needs to be within five pounds of each other. The gate was adjusted to 2.1 for two more runs and 2.2 for two more. The subsequent weights for the 2.1 gate setting were 109.4 and 109.5. For the setting of 2.2, they were 112.2 and 112.1. For this placement, the gate setting needs to be at 2.1. That setting is what got us closest to the design weight of 110 pounds. Next up is calibration of the rock gate. This is the same as for the sand gate. A sample needs to be taken the day before to determine the target weight. For this run, it was determined the rock had a moisture of 1.7 and our desired weight was 90 pounds. The discharge time is the same as for the sand. The first run was discharged at a gate setting of 2.9 and these runs weighed 88.1 and 88 pounds. Again, this needs to be ran for a weight below, equal to, and above the target weight. So the next gate setting was at 3 and the discharge weights were 88.9 and 89.3. The gate was adjusted again to now 3.1 and two more samples have been run. These samples were run and discharged at 90.05 pounds and 90.03 pounds. So for this mix and setting we're going to set the gate to 3.1 because that's what gives us the close to the design weight of the stone. Last but not least is calibrating the latex control valve. Again we have to get the tear weight of a latex bucket. Then we set the control valve to a setting to discharge three and a half gallons of latex during the discharge time determined in the cement calibration. We're assuming latex weighs 8.4 pounds per gallon so that's 8.4 times 3.5 equals 29.4 pounds. 
So we start discharging the latex and we're going to the calculated time of 28.063 or as close to it as possible. Once you get to that 28.063, you stop discharging, you get your weight, and then we are ready to input our weight into our spreadsheet. So for our first run, you can see here our design time is 28. And then we know we had a dial setting of 8.1 is what we set the latex uh, control valve to. So with that valve at 8.1, we got a weight of 31.8 pounds of latex. So that's more than what we were shooting for. So let's adjust the dial gauge to 7.7. .7. We did that, ran our te test again, and we got a weight of 30 pounds of latex. So that's got us closer. So we ran it again at 7.7 .7 setting. And after doing the discharge and getting our weight, we got 29.5. You continue doing this testing until you get at least two consecutive discharges at 29.5 pounds plus or minus 0 0.5. So we have that and we are finished calibrating the mobile mixer. We now have all of our information for the cement, sand, rock, and latex. We can use this information to now go start making latex and complete our latex pour. Again, I want to say thank you to Modified Concrete for letting us get some video and pictures of them during this latex calibration.